It's going to be a, a prophetic guideline today that's going to come forth. So how many of you are interested to listen to the word of God this evening? Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's very interesting because um, with these couple of verses, I was, uh, me and Rami was also, we were discussing about this recently and this morning at uh, Your Will Community Church that the precious lady who shared this morning, she also shared from the same uh, scriptures and when I went and asked the Lord what he wants me to share, he also took me to the same couple of verses in Numbers chapter 13. Okay, so the title for today's message is A Backward Mentality. A Backward Mentality. We can see from the start of Numbers chapter 13, God giving instructions to Moses and God tells Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I'm going to give to the children of Israel. And from each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, everyone a leader among them. So what Moses did was he, he picked out a person from each tribe, 12 people together, and he sent these people to spy out the land. So they came back and the Bible tells us, Numbers chapter 13, one three. That's what we are. The chapter that we are uh, looking at today. Ten out of those twelve spies, they came back with negative feedback. Mm -hmm. Only two, Joshua and Caleb, they had a positive attitude. You need to understand when Joshua and Caleb went with the rest of the ten other people to spy out the land of Caleb, they didn't see something different to what the other 10 saw. They saw the same set of people, the same set of giants, the same set of inhabitants, the same set of challenges that they will have to overcome. They didn't see anything different. But when they had to come back and report, give a report to Moses and to the rest of the children of Israel, those 10 guys came up with a very different report. These 10 people had a very negative approach and what they had was a very backward mentality. Now, this is what the Lord was ministering to me this evening. He was telling son, I'm about to do something powerful in the lives of my children. Because if you remember last uh, Wednesday, but the Lord was ministering to us was that this is a season of prophetic fulfillment in your life. Mm. Now, how many of you want to experience a prophetic fulfillment? Mm. God has given you promises that promise fulfillment. Mm. You see, God can't lie. Mm. If God lies, his word doesn't manifest. That's why Numbers chapter 23, verse number 19, the Bible says, God can't lie. When God gives you a promise, when God gives you a prophetic word, it will come to pass in its season. So you need to understand, my precious people of God, this is the season for you to see the prophetic word coming into life. And when that is about to happen, the last thing that you and I need to have is a backward mentality. This is exactly what happened with these 10 people because God was about to do something powerful. God was about to deliver the promised land into their hands to make them tread their feet in the promised land, in the very promised land that God said that flows with milk and honey, I'm going to give it to you. When God was about to do it, when he was just about to do it, 10 people were having a backward mentality. Let's read in Numbers chapter 13. Let's read verses 26 to 29. Numbers chapter 13, we'll read verses 26 to 29. We will see the kind of report these 10 people give. Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. 
they brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. Now look at what they say from verse number 18. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Can you see the kind of backward mentality these ten were having? Now, as a matter of fact, when you read the next verse, verse number 30, you can see the Bible says, then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. So here are 10 people who are complaining and saying that it can't be done. And here is one guy, Caleb, and he says, let's go now, right now. Let's, let's go at once. Two against 10 people. Two who are having a positive attitude towards what can be done and 10 who are having a backward mentality. My precious people of God, a backward mentality means that you are dwelling in the negative. You are dwelling in the past. You are dwelling at what can't be done. You look at something, you will come up with 101 reasons as to why it can't be done. Do you know people like that sometimes? Mm -hmm. You go and tell something to them. Best thing is not to tell that to the, those people. You will be so demoralized. You will need, you know, uh, another 10 prayer meetings for you to, for your faith to be revived after that. Why? Because they are so good. They are so anointed in demoralizing you so much. To an extent, you have to go from one prayer meeting to another for, for your faith to be built up. There are people like that. You take something to them and they'll say, oh, what nonsense? How can you do that? What makes you think you can do that? No, it's not going to happen. There are people like this. They have a backward mentality. So my precious people of God, these 10 people, they had a backward mentality. And it became a big conflict at that very moment. Caleb and Joshua, they were trying to con convince Moses, Aaron, and the rest of the children of Israel saying it can be done. And these two guys are being outnumbered by 10 people who have now influenced the greater crowd and that negativity began to spread like wildfire among the rest of the children of Israel. To such an extent, when you keep reading that chapter, you can see the children of Israel say, let us stone these two guys who say that it can be done. Can you see the kind of challenge that they had to go through? So the Lord showed me five things about this backward mentality these 10 people had. Five important areas and if you Ah, my precious people of God, if you are struggling in these five areas, tonight is the night, right now is the moment where the Holy Spirit of God, you need to ask his help for you to break forth in this area, have a breakthrough in this area. Number one, their spiritual sight was weak. Their spiritual sight was weak. This is why I said all the 12, the 10 who had a negative uh, attitude and approach, and also Caleb and Joshua, when they went to spy out the land of Canaan, Joshua and Caleb, they, they didn't see anything different to what the other 10 saw. They saw the very same thing the other 10 people saw. But the difference with Joshua and Caleb was their spiritual sight was stronger. Their spiritual sight couldn't be easily taken by their natural sight. The other 10, their natural sight easily took over their weaker spiritual sight. This is why my precious people of God, spending time in the presence of the Holy Spirit is a must always because unless otherwise, you will not develop your spirit being, you will not develop your spirit, spiritual sight. And when the spiritual sight is weaker, your natural sight will dominate. And when your natural sight dominates, your spiritual sight will have a major challenge. 
you will find yourself in such a predicament where your natural, the flesh will try to dictate terms and conditions, say, no, this can't be done. And when that happens, it becomes a real challenge. This is exactly what happens. Their spiritual side was weak. The other 10, the 10 who had a negative approach towards this, the Bible says that they got frightened based on what they saw. They got frightened based on what they saw with their naked eyes. And they have come to the verge of entering the promised land. And yet, when, when they looked at the land of Canaan, based on what they saw with their natural eyes, they became frightened. So if your spiritual sight is strong, it doesn't matter what bad thing you may see with your natural eyes. You need to understand this very important. Only if your spiritual sight is strong, it doesn't matter what bad thing you may see with your natural eyes. And in these days, very especially these days, as you approach the verge of entering into your promised land, the, the promises that God has spoken over you, which are yes and amen, the enemy will try to show you things in the natural so that based on what you see in the natural, it will, he will try to dictate terms and conditions. This is exactly what happened with these uh, 10 people. They started saying, oh, there are giants there. The walls are too big. As a matter of fact, they, they were saying the walls are very thick also. We don't think we can break down these walls. They started coming up with excuse after excuse because their spiritual sight was very weak. Number two. Number two, they didn't remember the great things God had done before. We can see God being very grieved at this point and saying, why can't these fellows remember the great things that I have done? Because God was telling, I have done so much of powerful things in their lives. I have brought them through. The Red Sea, I have parted the Red Sea. I have done so much for them. I have given them manna from heaven. Why can't they remember these things? In Numbers chapter 14, verse number 11, Numbers chapter 14, verse number 11, God is telling to Moses, how long will these people reject me? How long will they not believe me? with all the signs which I have performed among them. Can you see what God is telling Moses? Why can't they remember the powerful signs which I have performed among them? They were the kind of people, very especially these 10 who came back with a negative report. They were the kind of people who didn't remember the powerful things God had done. You know, they were in such a place where they couldn't give an excuse saying God hadn't done anything powerful because they experienced the same powerful things that God did because they were in the same group. Mm. They came through, they also came through the Red Sea. They crossed Jordan. They ate manna that was given from heaven. They saw all this powerful science that God did, but yet they forgot. My precious people of God, in the next couple of days, in the next couple of weeks, you have to start remembering the powerful things the Lord has done in the past. The only time you look back in your life must be for you to remember the great things the Lord has done. That will refuel you. It will refuel your spirit. When you remember the great things the Lord has done, you bring into your remembrance what God did two years ago when you were in that predicament. When you thought there was no way forward, when you were wondering where your help was going to come from, and suddenly when God answered, oh, have you forgotten that moment? What about that disease, that life-threatening disease? But probably the doctors declared death over you and said there is nothing we can do in our human effort. We have done our best, but yet God brought you through. Have you forgotten that great work the Lord did? Remember, these 10 people, they had no remembrance of what the Lord had done. If not, if, if they remembered what the Lord had done before, 
when they came back to Moses and Aaron, they would have said, just like Caleb and Joshua, they would have also said, no, this can be done. Let us go right now. But sadly, <coughs> they didn't remember the great things the Lord had done before. These are signs of people who have a backward mentality. They are just focused on the past. They are just fo they are just focused on the failures. They just focus on how things can't be done. And if you are a person who is surrounded with people like them, naturally you will also end up becoming like one of them. This is why you need to be very careful when it comes to who you associate. If you associate people who have a backward mentality, you will also end up having a backward mentality. Because the Bible says iron sharpens iron. So if you are with the wrong type of iron, and if that iron types to, you know, tries to, if it starts rubbing on you, if, if that wrong type of iron starts sharpening you, you are going to get sharpened in the wrong way. Your mentality will get sharpened in such a way that you will end up with a very backward mentality. Number three. Number three. Here's the third sign that we can see from this very incident. They didn't give a place for those with a positive attitude. They didn't give any place for those with a positive attitude. This is how you know, the people who have a backward mentality, they work. They won't let, even when there are two who are saying it can be done, let's go right now, my goodness. Because there's no that they have outnumbered Caleb and Joshua because they were just two people and they had 10. They would have looked at the numbers and said, oh, what are these two guys talking? Uh, they're talking nonsense, these two fellows. They would have probably thought, you know, we all saw the same thing. How can they say something different? We saw the Amalekites, we saw the giants who were there. We saw how big this, uh, the, the walls of the cities are, how thick they are. Let's read from the Bible and let's see what happens. Then you will understand how they function. Okay, Numbers chapter 13, we are going to read verses 30 to 33. Numbers 13, verses 30 to 33. Now, when they first told Moses and Aaron it can't be done, verse number 30 says, then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take position for we are well able to overcome it. Now, Caleb says it can be done. Now look at what happens in verse number 31 on this. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people. After Caleb says it can be done, again, these people are saying, no, it can't be done. We are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. Can you see how they start overriding Caleb here? And they say they are stronger than us. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. And then verse number 33, they say, there, there we saw the giants the descendants of Anak came from the giants and we were like little grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Can you see that they had already compared themselves <coughs> with, the, with the people who were there against the giants? They say, we are like little grasshoppers when we compare us with the giants. Caleb said, when they first murmured, Caleb said, no, it can be done. And these 10, they got together and they overrided. But Caleb said, say, no, this guy is mad. He's talking nonsense. It can't be done. They are stronger than us. They are outnumbered than us. They are giants. They are great in stature. We are like little grasshoppers. Can you see how they didn't give a place for those who had a positive attitude? People who have a backward mentality, my precious people of God, even when someone is there who has a positive attitude, who will say that it can be done, they will try to outnumber that person. They will try to override that person and say, no, it can't be done. So my precious people of God, if you are challenged in this area, you have to ask the Holy Spirit of God to help you so that you will overcome. Because you are on the verge of seeing something new in your life. 
How many of you believe that you are on the verge of seeing something new in your life? Praise be to God, because if you believe, what you believe manifests in your life. Do you, have you noticed that, no, I don't come all the time and say, no, it's a season of prophetic fulfillment. I don't keep saying that every week. I don't keep saying that every month. No. When the Lord says, we speak. When God says something else, we speak that. We can't speak anything that God is not telling us. So when God says it is a season of prophetic and promise fulfillment, my precious people of God, you are bound to see something great happening in your life. You are going to see a quickening in your life in this season. Mm -hmm. And in order for you to step into your promised land, these are the areas that you and I need to overcome step by step, step by step. With that, we are going into our, the, the fourth point. The fourth point. Now, here comes an interesting thing. Listen to this, what I'm about to say, the fourth point. They had attachment to th attachments to things that God had no interest in. They had attachments to things which God had no interest in. God had removed the children of Israel out of Egypt, where they were in bondage, where they were in slavery, where Pharaoh was putting pressure on top of them, left, right, and center. Out of all that slavery, out of all that pressure, God had delivered them out of Egypt. But when they are on the verge of entering the promised land, you can see them showing signs of still having attachments back to Egypt. God had delivered them out of Egypt, but these fellows, they were still having an attachment, a strong attachment actually, to Egypt. God delivered them out of Egypt because God had no inter intention and God had no interest in them being in Egypt. Still, these people were having a strong attachment to Egypt to which God had no interest whatsoever. We see this in Numbers chapter 14, the first four verses. Let's read Numbers 14, verses 1 to 4. Now, after the 10 overrided what Caleb said, Look at what happened, verses one onwards. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt. Oh my goodness. Can you see the attachment? At some, somewhere down the line, the truth will come out of their heart. Here comes out, you know, because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verse number 34, what did Jesus say? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the mouth can't speak anything that is not in the heart of a person. So these people are pouring out their heart and showing that they were still having an attachment to Egypt. And they're saying, only if we had died in the land of Egypt, or only if we had died in this wilderness, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword? that our wives and children should become victims. Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? My goodness. Can you see the dangerous thing about having the wrong attachments? You know why? Because God is want, when God wants to do something powerful in your life, you will want to return back to that stronghold. You will want to go back to that attachment, to that very place. God had delivered them out of Egypt. God is now on the verge of thrusting them out into the promised land. And these guys, they want to turn back and go back to Egypt. They are telling, would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? Now let, look at verse number four. Look at what they say. So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. My goodness, they have already discussed you know, so much. Little do they know that they are on the, you know, just on the brink of stepping into the, uh, the promised land. And they want to appoint a leader also because they are not happy with the Moses. They are not happy with Aaron because they knew that no matter what they say, they still have a, a, a soft spot towards uh, Caleb and Joshua because they were coming with positive news. And because of that, they are saying, let us establish a new leader among us who will take us back to that wrong place, to the place where we were, to that place where we had the wrong attachment to. 
my precious people of God, entering into God's promised land with the wrong attachments is very dangerous. This evening, you need to ask the Holy Spirit of God to expose your heart because inside of your heart, there can lie hidden attachments that are ungodly. You may be having attachments sometimes to certain things, to certain places. Can Do you know, you, as much as you can have attachments to people, you can also have attachments to places. When God doesn't want them to be in Egypt, these people, they have had a strong attachment to go back to Egypt. That's why they're saying, well, why did you bring us out of Egypt? We should have had a peaceful death. We should have, you know, even with the pressure Pharaoh was giving us, we could have somehow managed. So they had attachment to things that God had no interest in. If you are serious when it comes to stepping into your promised land in this season of prophetic fulfillment, you need to get rid of those attachments to things that God has no interest in. So this evening, what should your prayer be? Your, your prayer should be, Lord, if I am having an attachment to anyone, <coughs> to anything, to any place, to anything whatsoever, Lord, that you have no interest in, reveal it to me, Lord. Because like I said, trying to step in to the promised land of God with the wrong attachments is deadly. Last but not least, we are coming to the fifth point. How many of you are saying that you are blessed by this word? Because when God speaks, only he can deliver us. Number five, another sign of people who have a backward mentality is they have a complaining spirit. They have a complaining spirit. These 10 people who came back with the negative news, they had a complaining spirit. As a matter of fact, this is something we can see that can be generalized to the rest of the children of Israel. They were very good at complaining. We can see even from the time you know, where the Red Sea parted, when they came through, walked through the Red Sea, came to the other side, even then they started complaining. They told uh, Moses, oh, how, what are we going to eat? We don't even have our water to drink. And Moses had to cry out unto the Lord. And then again, they started complaining. So the children of Israel, they were good murmurers. They were good at one area. They were really good verse at complaining. So if someone wants to learn how to become a good complainer, you know, there's so much to learn from the children of Israel. You know? And I pray that you are not a person who wants to learn how to complain. <laughs> so <laughs> they had a complaining spirit. Now I'm going to show you something interesting that God tells Moses about the spirit that these 10 people had. Actually, he compares their spirit with the spirit of Caleb. God tells it in his very own words. Let's read Numbers 14, verses 20 to 24. Numbers chapter 14, verses 20 to 24. Then God said, I have pardoned according to your word. Now, before that, no, let me pause here for a minute. Before that, when you read the previous couple of chapters, you can see how God tells Moses, I'm going to destroy these fellows, right? Mm. And for the first time, like you can see, Moses telling God, please don't do this. If you do this, we will become a joke in the sight of our opponents. And it's like for the first time, you can see God listening to man, like God receiving like counsel from man. He's telling, yes, I will change my mind. And here God is telling in verse number 20 to Moses, I have pardoned according to your word. God is telling Moses, okay, I will listen to you. But truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because of all the men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test now these 10 times and I have not heeded my voice. They certainly shall not see the land of which I saw to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see. Now look at what God is telling Moses in verse number 24. Verse number 24 is the key verse. God is telling, but my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him, 
and he has followed me fully god is telling moses caleb has a different spirit he doesn't have a complaining spirit and because he doesn't have a complaining spirit god is telling moses what he has done what he has followed me fully do you know what god is telling here in other words he's telling anyone who has a complaining spirit can't follow god that is what mm. god is telling he is telling caleb has a different spirit it's not a complaining spirit and because of this he has followed me fully that is why moses he came back to you and he said this can be done let us do it right now and god is telling he has a different spirit in him and he has followed me fully i will bring into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it can you see even the approach that god has towards people who don't have a backward mentality if you have a yes a can do attitude you you must know that all heaven is backing you up when you are led by faith when you live by faith and not by sight all heaven is backing you up because hebrews chapter 11 verse number 6 says it's by faith we please god complaining doesn't please god but don't get me wrong somewhere down the line we have all fallen in this area i can remember the time that i got into ministry i used to tell god oh god please make this easier for me i used to be like that at my you know early christian days but as we i was journeying in the law god began to train and mold me to break all those things negative negative things apart one after the other and to make us stronger so that we will not live by sight but by faith so look at what god is telling god is telling moses caleb has a different spirit he doesn't have a complaining spirit unlike the other 10 and god is telling because of that i am going to make sure that his descendants shall inherit it and this is why out of most of the leaders in the old testament one of my favorite is joshua you know why not everyone who starts well finishes well joshua and caleb they started well they ended also well you in your life my precious people of god you have started well but you must have the desire to finish your race well this journey that we live in the lord is a journey that we must run the race meaningfully so that we will end this race well joshua you can see when you keep reading the book of joshua at the end how he beautifully divided the land the promised land to the the different tribes he was given a task he was entrusted with the task by the law and he executed it perfectly because he did not have a backward mentality another good takeaway for you and i this evening is even if you have one person who doesn't have a backward mentality that one person is will be so powerful to help you to move forward in life doesn't matter if 10 people are surrounding you it doesn't matter if 100 people with a backward mentality are surrounding you if you still have one good friend at least one person in your life who doesn't have a backward mentality they are journeying with the lord they know the word of god and as much as they are focused on what god can do they will also help you to be focused on what god is about to do this is why joshua uh, joshua and caleb they were a powerful combination you know what the lord is telling me today right now jo- joshua and caleb are two people marriages must become like this when a marriage in a marriage when two people when the husband and wife don't have a backward mentality just imagine the powerful things the lord can do if you are a person who is into business you have a business partner just imagine if you don't have a backward mentality what the lord can do so remember you are on the verge of experiencing the promises of god manifesting over your life in this season of prophetic fulfillment and the last thing that we need is to have a backward mentality 
like those ten who came to came back to Moses and said, "It can't be done." That is not how God wants us to be. Even if you see giants in front of you, even if you see high walls of Jericho in front of you, you need to know when God is for you, it doesn't matter who is against you. When God is for you, it doesn't matter what is against you. Because when God has spoken, you need to understand there will be challenges. When God speaks, the enemy will try to hinder your path. That is one way that you know that God has spoken. So if you are a person that God has spoken to you, given you a promise, given you a prophecy, and now contrary winds are blowing against you, that is a good sign mm. that the word that you have received from the Lord is genuine, that it has come from the genuine source, which is the Holy Spirit of God. When he speaks, the word will definitely be tested. Mm. But the good news is that this mm. testing season mm. is about to end. You just need to keep enduring a little bit more. And you are going to see the Lord doing some powerful things in your life. How many of you believe that? And as we're going to worship the Lord once again with that beautiful song of uh, Moses, which is sings in Deuteronomy chapter 32. We were singing that in the beginning today. The Moses says, you ascribe greatness to our God, the rock. His ways, his ways perfect and all his ways are just. As we worship the Lord, if you are a person who is troubled in your mind, with negative things, with negative thoughts. Probably a lot of people would have told you so many negative things saying, no, it can't be done. Probably people would have asked you, where is your answer? You may be questioning yourself, oh, I got that prophecy, but what is happening? I don't see anything manifesting. You need to know the Bible says, 1 Timothy chapter 1, 18, the Bible says, keep fighting with the prophecies that were given to you and you will see the promise of God coming to pass. We're going to worship the Lord once again. And as we do that, may every stronghold in your mind be broken in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ascribe greatness to our God the Lord. His work is perfect and all his ways are just. Ascribe greatness to our God the Rock. His work is perfect and all his ways are just. The God of faithfulness and without injustice, true and I. Right is he, the God of faithfulness and without injustice, true and right is he. In your home, if there is someone seated next to you, your spouse, your children, Look at them and encourage them right now and say, you are going to see powerful things happening. Soon, soon you are going to see powerful things happening in your life. The Lord will do something powerful in you. Very soon in Jesus' name. The God of faithfulness and without injustice. True and right is He. The God of faithfulness and without injustice, true and right is He. Ascribe greatness to our God, the Rock. His work is perfect, and all His ways are just. Hallelujah. Ascribe greatness to our God the Rock. His work is perfect, and all His ways are just. 
the God of faithfulness that without injustice, true and upright is sin. The God of faithfulness that without injustice, true and upright is sin. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is telling me to tell Florentia that uh, you've been going through something in your life that you were thought, that you have thought was to do with a lot of injustice. In the coming days, I declare that you're going to see a turnaround. Let there be justice done for you in Jesus' mighty name. No matter what you have gone through, may the Lord grant unto you justice because he's the God of all justice. Hallelujah. The God of faithfulness and without injustice, true and upright is seen. The God of faithfulness and without injustice, true and upright is seen. Holy Spirit of God wants me to tell someone here you have ongoing conflicts in your family. It's like people who are related to you. Your family, your immediate family members are fighting with each other. And I speak life and peace into that situation. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name I speak peace into that situation. Let every spirit of strife leave them in Jesus' mighty name. Let every spirit of division be commanded to leave in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus. The God of faithfulness and without injustice true and upright is here. The God of faithfulness and without injustice true and upright is here. As we keep worshiping the Lord, you can get your communion elements ready to partake in the table of grace. Thank you for the cross, the mighty cross. The God himself will die for such as us. And every day we've changed into your privilege for and by the cross we've truly been transformed. Thank you for the cross, the mighty cross. Hallelujah, that God himself would die for such a sound. And every day we've changed into your image more and more. And by the cross we truly be transformed. I'm so amazed and I give you praise that you would save us at such a call. I'm so amazed and I give you praise for the power of the cross. Shall we worship Jesus? Thank you for the cross, the mighty cross. That God himself would die for such as us. And every day we've changed into your image more and more. And by the cross we've truly been transformed. I'm so amazed and I give you praise that you would save us at such a call. I'm so amazed and I give you praise for the power of the cross. 
I'm so amazed, and I give you praise that you would save us at such a call. I'm so amazed, and I give you praise for the power of the cross. The Bible says that Jesus saved you and I with such a massive cost. The price he paid for you and I by shedding his sinless blood is a massive cost because there was no other substitute for his sinless blood. How many grateful hearts are here this evening who are saying, Jesus, I'm ever so grateful for your sinless blood because you paid the highest price. You paid the highest cost, Lord Jesus, for my sin. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Remember the body of Jesus right now. That was given, that he freely he gave himself the Bible says on your behalf. Begin to thank him for his body and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> thank you, Lord, for your body that you freely, you willingly gave yourself for me. I'm ever so grateful, Lord. Because of your body, Lord Jesus. Today, I know that you are such a faithful God. And I honor your sacrifice on Calvary. In Jesus' name, you may partake in the body of Christ. <clears throat> Honor the blood of Jesus. Let's take a moment and begin to meditate on the blood of Jesus. And say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your blood. Thank you for your sinless blood. Yes, go ahead and partake in the body of Christ. And we're going to take a moment and we're going to keep meditating on the blood of Jesus for a little while. And as you do that, Thank Jesus for that sinless blood he shed for you. I am so amazed and I give you praise that you would save us at such a cause. I'm so amazed and I give you Praise for the power of the cross. The Bible says the blood of Jesus still speaks on your behalf. The blood of Jesus, the Bible says, speaks greater than the blood of Jesus, the blood of Abel. According to Revelation chapter 1, verse number 5, the blood of Jesus washes his sin as white as me. So therefore, right now, if you need to repent of anything, repent right now and say, Lord Jesus, wash me clean by your blood. Wash me clean by your blood, Lord. Cleanse me by your blood. I honor your blood. Thank you for your sinless blood that gushed out of your body because of your love for me. Thank you, Jesus. I honor your blood. In Jesus' name, you may partake the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. How many of you are thanking the Lord for what He has done this evening? The work that He has spoken. How many of you are believing that in the days to come you are going to see the glory of God manifesting in your life? Hallelujah. We're going to worship the Lord, sing out a praise song as we conclude. 
our Sunday service today. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Glory, glory, Lord. You are a mighty God. Glory, glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Glory, glory, Lord. You are a mighty God. Glory, glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Glory, glory, Lord. You are an awesome God. You are a mighty God. You are an awesome God, this Lord. You are a mighty God. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. He is risen, he is risen, and he lives forevermore. He is risen, he is risen. Come on and celebrate. The resurrection of our Lord. We'll sing once more unto the Lord. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. He is risen, he is risen, and he lives forevermore. He is risen, he is risen, come and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Those of you who have lost anything, just go back to the enemy's camp and take back what rightfully belongs to you. I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Yeah. Took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. It's out of my feet, it's under my feet. He's out of my feet, it's under my feet. He's out of my feet, he's under my feet. Satan is under my feet. I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. Took back what he stole from me. I went to the enemy's camp. And I took back what he stole from me. Out of my feet, it is out of my feet. It's out of my feet, it is under my feet. It's out of my feet, it is under my feet. Satan is out of my feet. Hallelujah. That will be your benediction tonight. That Satan is under your feet. How many of you will say, Thank you, Lord? For Satan is under my feet. And victory belongs to me. Victory in you is my portion, Lord. And in the coming days, may you see his manifesting glory. Bringing every promise, bringing every prophetic word into fulfillment in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, and all God's people say, Amen and Amen.